Hi guys, welcome back. This is Tracy with TR's Tarot Talk 1111. This is March 3rd. It's Sunday. I am late getting my video up because I had some personal issues that I had to take care of. However, I'm going to get this recorded. I'm going to my sister's <laughs> where her internet's super speedy. I will have it up before the end of the day. I generally like to have them up in the morning for you and I do apologize. However, it is on its way, okay? Also, I am doing the bridge today. Spirit likes the bridge. I don't know why, but uh, it seems to be the best way to get to the most information that we can get. Okay, so I've got a Moonology card for the overall influence of the energies of the day. Moon energies. Then I've got a Divine Masculine's uh, Oracle card with the Animal Dreaming Oracle deck. For the Feminine, I've got the Divine Feminine uh, Love Your Inner Goddess Guide or uh, Tarot deck by Alana Fairchild. Then I've got the Osho Zen cards doing the Head, Home, Heart, Hopes and Fears of Masculine and Feminine. I've got a card of action. I ask specifically what actions will the Divine Masculine take today toward union to the Feminine? And I asked vice versa. What actions will the Feminine take today toward her Masculine? Then we've got the Oracle deck, Divine Oracle. Don't know the name of it, but it came without a book. So there it is, and I love them. I might have to get the bigger... Uh, this is a pocket version. That's why it doesn't even have a box to tell you. But anyhow, so this is advice from Spirit. This is the overall energy. I was very specific. I shuffled for a long time. I said, I need to know what is the most prominent energy and, and uh, lesson to be in boldly embraced by the feminine and masculine today. Okay, now we're going to uh, go into the intro just for a second. I just want to uh, start every video from now on with gratitude. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in and clicking uh, like if you like it, dislike if you don't like it. If it resonates, keep it. If it don't, let it go. Thank you for being my love tribe. Thank you for being on this journey because we embold each other. We learn from each other. We teach each other. This is the Hierophant energy that we are in. This is being the student and the teacher at the same time. So as we learn our lessons, we are also teaching lessons to others through example. All right, I wanted to let you know that in the description box, you will find a link to a Kalamazoo, Michigan uh, expo show that I am doing next weekend. I think it's called Divine Love and Light. I can't remember the exact name of it, but the link is below. And if you live near or in Kalamazoo, Michigan, pardon me, I'm drinking some of my hot chocolate, come see me. The link's below. If you would like to donate to my channel, thank you, thank you, thank you. I have so much gratitude for that. I am trying to get better lighting, better camera. Uh, I'm going through a divorce, so I'm trying to get my own space. I'm asking the universe to manifest the perfect place for me and my nine-year-old son. It takes money. Um, however, I don't believe that for a moment that I have to have money to make this happen. So if you can't donate with money, please just say a prayer for me. Hold space for me. Ask the divine to prepare a door to the perfect place that me and my family need to be at this time in our lives. And that, my friend, is a great, great donation to me and my family right now. However, if you do feel that you can afford it and you would like to help monetarily, any little bit helps. Dollar eleven, eleven eleven, nine nine nine. Use magic numbers. They will manifest for me. And you know love is like a magic penny. If you give it away, you'll have so many. So if it's on your heart, do it, because you will get back tenfold what you give. If it's not on your heart, it's okay, I understand. A lot of times it's not on my heart because I'm not in that position at the moment. I'm still dealing with my, um, my 
block of, of uh, having poverty consciousness, okay? A lot of us are struggling with that. So if you're in poverty consciousness where you believe you don't have enough, you've got lack in your life, you'll never get your needs met, we manifest that. And it's very, very difficult for me to ask for help from people. So doing this is not comfortable, but if, you, if it's on your heart and mind, know that you will be blessed also. Um, you are blessed every day that I give you a reading. I am giving you all of my attention and all of my time. And I don't do 5, 12, 15 minute readings for you guys. I do big, long, in-depth readings. We go deep. Why? Because I am the student as well as the teacher. Okay, moving on to the next uh, thing is if you would like a reading, if you are on this journey and you need coaching or you need an in-depth look, I am starting a new reading that I am making available to you guys. It's called the Go Deep Reading, okay? It's $100 and we go deep. I don't care if it takes me an hour, if it takes me an hour and a half. I am not giving up until you have gotten the reading that you need to help coach you in this uh, journey to get you to where you need to be. All right, so if you're interested in that, um, I haven't put it in the description yet, but I will. Spirit told me to offer this because some people need to go deep. Sometimes a 15, 20 minute, 30 minute reading is just not enough, okay? If you feel like that and you're lost and you're really in that Nine of Swords, because I've come across most of us are in that Nine of Swords energy, being stressed and fearful. Um, if you just want some clarity, this is a general read. This is the collective. This is everybody's on the journey, but not everybody's at the same place at the same time. So the energies could certainly be a little behind or a little forward depending on where you are in your journey. If you would like your own journey in your own situations, then please hit the uh, email button and email me and let me know what kind of reading you would like. Okay? All right, let's get cracking here. <laughs> Overall energy for Sunday, March 3rd, is have faith in your dreams. Waxing crescent moon. I'm going to get a read on it for you. I've been using these cards a lot. Pretty soon I won't need the book anymore. But they are new to me, so I like to read from the book till I get it. Waxing crescent moon. Have faith in your dreams. Don't give up. The situation you're asking about is still taking form. You're nowhere near the end of this story. Whatever's happening now is just a step along the way. As, as they say in the self-help classics, everything will be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. However, the waxing crescent moon card is a reminder that you must still keep working towards whatever it is that you want. If you can't take practical steps, spend time meditating on the questions you're asking about. And allow your higher self to download information to you about your best next step. Overall, this card suggests that there is every reason to be hopeful for a very positive outcome to the situation you're asking about. So keep the faith and don't give up. How do you attune to this moon? I, you say, I am focused on what I want. Additional meanings for this card? Just because you can't see your dreams, it doesn't mean they're not manifesting. Don't look back. Stay focused on moving forwards. Be patient. Okay, I, Spirit says i got to stop for a second. This don't look back. Some of us, most of us, are dealing with someone from the past. Whether it's a past life or this life in our past. And it says don't look back. And I'm hearing it's not what it was. It never will. From the moment it happened. It was never going to be what it was again. Because expansion is about growth. The moment the past took the steps that it took, made the decisions that it made, became what it became, it immediately changed. Whether for the worst or for the better, 
But the past is the past. you got to leave the past in the past. Forgive it. Let it go. Tell universe you are ready to transmute the past into a positive future. Okay? Be patient as all these events unfold. Dig a little deeper to find more courage. Take a look in the mirror. Make it a long, hard look. For in the mirror lies the answer to all your questions. The waxing crescent moon is the second moon phase in the eight main moon phases. But even if it's not the time of the waxing crescent moon when you pull this card, it still suggests you need to really pursue your dreams. It's a time to put your foot down hard as you chase your goals. Wow, that's a pretty strong statement. And you know what? A lot of us have been stuck, <laughs> stuck like Chuck. I love that phrase. Sorry, I want to drink my hot chocolate before it gets cold. All right, so moving on. We are going to do the oracles at the last, guys. Just like always. What's going on in the masculine's headspace today? Trust. This is the king of cups, guys. Or no? No. This is the knight of cups. Why they call it trust, I don't know. We've got king, queen, page, knight. Yeah, it's a knight. Okay, it's a leap of faith. He's trusting in the divine. Maybe, maybe just for a day. Because I feel this with the whole collective. You know, Sunday, the day of rest. I feel like a lot of us are doing that. I know I have. Not really. I've been working. I've been doing readings all day. But... I love doing my reading, excuse me. And when I can get peace and quiet and time to do these without interruption, which is hard to do. I got the hiccups now from drinking the hot chocolate. Too fast, I guess. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that, you know, it's been a rough couple of weeks, possibly a rough couple of months. And I really do feel the collective just taking a breath today. So... He's taking a leap of faith, or he's trusting that things are just going to be the way they're supposed to be. And if you look at the conventional meaning of the Knight of Cups, it's also willing to take a leap of faith and come forward with a cup of love toward the feminine. Okay, let's move on to the feminine's headspace. What's going on in her head? Eight of Wands, communication. Eight of Wands, fast-moving energy. This is moving forward. You know, a lot of times I read this Eight of Wands as um, communication through texting or emails or, or um, social media. But in this deck, it's literally called traveling. So I feel like the feminine is moving forward. I don't think she's moving away from anything. She's just allowing things to unfold as she takes steps to move forward in her life. And some of you are really wanting to move forward with the masculine. Some of you are kind of giving up hope and wanting to move forward away from it. But it's all in your head. Okay, this is not emotions. This is not in the heart space. This is not in the outcome. This is truly in your head. So it's planning, planning to move forward, maybe planning to communicate, maybe hoping. Well, no, that would be in the hopes and fears. But maybe you're just thinking about what would it be like to truly communicate with my masculine openly and honestly without all of my guards up, to just really sit down and have it out. All right, so what's going on in the home? What, what's their home atmosphere like right now? We've got the Innocence card in reverse. Innocence card in reverse. i got to look that up. I'm pretty sure that's the sun. <laughs> These cards are a little different. It's hard to tell. So let me look it up. That is 
19. Yeah, it's the sun in this deck. All right, but it's the innocence card. It could have to do with family. It could have to do with, you know, it's in the reverse. And I know for a fact that some of these masculines have families from a karmic relationship. So it could be they're all alone today. You know, no grandbabies around, no children around. You know, the sun is all about happiness and joy. It's about that nice home, family. It's just the yes card. The sun is the yes card. Yes, yes, yes. You know, so in his home right now, things aren't so good. The sun is not shining. The children are not laughing. The dogs are not playing. I feel a little sense of melancholy. Feels like the masculine in his thoughts today is what it feels like. In the home. But it's nice that he's, you know, thinking about, thinking about an offer. Thinking about trusting the process. But in the home, I feel, I feel loneliness. <laughs> I don't know why, but I do. Perhaps if there is still a karmic relationship there, they're just gone to dinner or something. Left him home alone. I don't know. In her home is the tower in reverse. And that's nice. That's I can resonate with that. I really can. Because although I'm going through this separation and divorce, I still desperately love my husband. He's a great guy. He's not great for me. I, I tend to bring out his lower side. <laughs> But nobody else does. I see him interacting with other people and he, he does great. You know, it's just a disconnect with us. So that tower, that's avoiding a tower. It could be healing from a tower. But you know, I'm good. I'm good. I hope you guys are good too. In the home space, a tower moment has happened and there's change coming. But in the meantime, it just kind of feels like resolution like healing from the tower moment healing from the tower moment in the home space two major arcanas for both of them in the home space we got the sun card in reverse and we've got the tower card in reverse so they really are mirroring each other okay he's not feeling happy and she's feeling like um, her whole world shifted and now she's got to regroup and recover all right, what's going on in their heart space? Ah, uh, we got guidance in reverse. This is the three of pentacles also. All right, so there's a double message when you've got an oracle that's also a tarot. Guidance in reverse is literally in his heart. He's not trusting his information. He's not trusting the higher self. He feels kind of alone. And he feels like the universe is not speaking clearly or loud enough to him. Although I know it is. Some of these masculines have chosen to take a path of, of uh, solitary. They've gone within. They're learning. They're growing. They're expanding. I think that they know. Like on a subconscious level, those masculines who aren't awake, who don't know what a soulmate is or a twin flame they don't understand the connection but there's definitely guidance that they're getting and and they don't understand it they're like i don't get it what does this mean who is this person from my past that won't go away why do they keep showing up why do i even care why do i have feelings for this it's kind of feeling like you're like he's in the upside down like in Stranger Things, he's living in the upside down at the moment. Okay, but he's going to get there. It's the Three of Pentacles. It's also about partnerships and willing to work on things. And I just really feel this sense of um, 
rest, reflection, maybe a little bit of self-pity. Feeling like um, they just don't know which direction to go in. They want divine to come in and lead them, and they are, but he doesn't recognize it. Doesn't see it, doesn't feel it. It's not in his existence at the moment, in his thoughts, in his heart. Sorry, guys. All right, so what's going on in her heart space? Ooh. Okay, we've got the Hermit card in reverse. Good for her. Good for her. This is a moment of clarity. This is coming out. For some of you, it's literally coming out of the Hermit mode. For others of you, you're just going deeper. Whoa. Whoosh. Into the unknown. Upside down. And I feel like that's good. For the ones of you that are going really, really deep, and that's what this represents, looking for your enlightenment, wanting it with your heart, feeling it in your heart that it's necessary. It's a beautiful place to be. You will find your clarity in this, this energy. For others of you, you've already gone deep and you're coming out, and that's why it's in the reverse, because you're coming back to civilization, back to the 3D, back to, back to life, back to reality. <laughs> Thank you, Spirit. I'm sorry, guys. Spirit talks to me in song. So in the heart space, she's healing. She's gaining clarity, not outer clarity. She's not looking anymore for clarity from her masculine. She is, sorry, I keep bumping the table. She's actually going within to get her clarity, and that is a smart move. Some of you have already done it, and some of you are just now coming out of it. But I am hearing spirits singing. <laughs> back to life, back to reality. It's Sunday. Preparing for Monday, perhaps, you know. The weekend's all about getting all up in your thoughts and your emotions and your heart space, but... Monday comes, it's back to the grindstone. So yeah, it's time to come back down. Come out. For some of you, for others of you, you're just going deeper, 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 and you need to. That's what I'm hearing. All right, hopes and fears. He's got the fool's card in reverse. He's afraid. He's afraid of jumping off too soon. He perhaps is afraid of a new beginning. You know, change is hard for people. Especially if you've been married or living with somebody or in a karmic relationship for a long time. Becoming solitarily on your own after such a long time of being in a partnership with somebody else. Takes its toll on you. Because, you know, we become codependent. We don't mean to, but we do. We start, you know, like, oh, well, they're responsible for the laundry and the kids and the, the appointments and the doctor appointments. And those are, those are their responsibilities. My responsibilities are, you know, fixing and doing repairs on the home, working around the yard, um, you know, providing for my family. These are all things that they felt comfortable with. This new beginning's got them a little frightened. But they do trust. Part of them in their head knows that they're on the right path. But the rest of it, once you get out of the head, you get into the home and the heart and the hopes and fears, there's a whole lot of upside down world going on with masculine today. He don't want a beginning today. He don't want to listen to his spirit guides either. He's kind of missing the, cla the, the, the clamor of the family dynamic. It's almost like I'm hearing echo walls. It's empty today. Whether it's empty because he's alone now for good, or it's empty because his karmic uh, soulmate maybe took the kids or the grandkids or whatever and went somewhere else for the day, leaving him home alone to his thoughts 
and his emotions. But the sun is not shining. Not in the home space today. Hmm. I could throw clarifiers, but we do this daily. So we'll just see what tomorrow brings. Because I don't see any action being asked for or taken. I'm hearing Sunday is a day of rest. Because she's in the upside down too. She's <laughs> tower upside down. And hermit upside down. A time for healing. A time for reflection. A time for spending time alone. Perhaps a time of not even engaging at all. Could be why everything's in the reverse. Because it's just downtime. It's like, nope. Not going to think about this. Not going to move on this. Not going to do anything with this. It is what it is. Tomorrow's a new day. What's going on in her hopes and fears? She's got the Five of Swords. Comparison. She's afraid that she doesn't meet the expectations. She's afraid she's not pretty enough, tall enough, glamorous enough, smart enough, strong enough. It's a kind of a sad, emotional kind of day, I feel. You guys will have to... Well, there's two. I'm really feeling some of you are really sad and disillusioned and just blah. But others of you, you're not even thinking about it. You're just doing your thing. It's like, yeah, I might watch a video and see where the energies lie. But really, I'm kind of doing my thing today. When you get into hopes and fears, sometimes you don't even know that you're experiencing this hope or fear. It could be very deeply rooted in your psyche. Yeah, I'm just feeling today is a day of being you. And if you've got inner work to do, perhaps you're doing it. A lot of major arcanas on the de desk here. A lot. We've got the sun. We've got the fool. We've got the hermit. We've got the tower card. This is karma. It's just that Wheel of Fortune turning again. Dropping off some more shit. Let's see what the masculine uh, step toward union was. What kind of action does he take today? Aw. Let me look real quick. Like I said, the oracles are different sometimes. What did I do with that book I just had? There it is. The Hierophant. There we go. That's why it says unity. Archangel Sandalphon. Traditional viewpoints or methods, spiritual organizations, seek out mentors and like-minded friends. I'm going to read this just because. I know what the Hierophant means, but in this Oracle deck, it might have a little different meaning. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Didn't I say that? This card illustrates that there's a spiritual teacher who's about to influence your, you or step into your life to impart his or her wisdom. Look around. Is there someone in your life who has the acumen, education, knowledge, and ability to integrate spirituality and its laws into the constraints of the physical world? This could be a compassionate person who offers guidance and inspiration. It reminds you that you're so much more than a physical being. You're also a spiritual being with unlimited potential. You may have also drawn this card to confirm that it's time to reach out and find like-minded people, organizations, or groups, or souls. Being part of a group where you can be yourself, share your thoughts, and get valuable feedback can infuse you and encourage you to be all that you can be. Kindred support kindred support helps you live life to your highest ideals. Finding the true inspiration and enlightenment that's part of your soul. Over time, the student often becomes the teacher. So don't be surprised when others seek you out and find you. 
This card of wisdom is letting you know that you have so much to share, whether you realize it or not. The Hierophant is also about um, marriages, contracts. I'm feeling like he's doing spiritual work. Like he went to church today, seeking guidance, perhaps, if he's a, a Christian or conform or a traditionalist. But that's the steps he's taking, is he's... He's going within, he's, you know, listening to spirit, he's asking for help, perhaps. Perhaps he's turning to an older sibling, or a parent, or a preacher, or a judge. But there's some kind of an action that he's taking toward the feminine, toward unity. That's kind of cool. I'm curious. Could be church. Could be just, you know, a friend that, that's really good at giving advice and helping guide them. Ah, what step is she taking toward union today? <laughs> the emperor in reverse. Yeah, she's just a mess. She's a she's a ball of jello is what I'm hearing. Bowl full of jello, that's all, just jiggling all over the place because why she's not in control of anything today. Today she's just allowing, you know, it's beautiful though because I'm hearing you're allowing yourself to be like jello, to be flexible and wiggly and jiggly and just allow. You're not trying to be over demanding, over controlling, overbearing. And you might also be a little disillusioned thinking your emperor is never going to show up. That there's just too many things that have to happen to cross that bridge together. Keep your faith, guys. Keep your faith. It's coming. It's coming. All right. So, Spirit, this is just knowledge from Spirit to help you on your, your path. Okay? We've got deep knowing. And then we've got time to go. Where are we going? To the edge. Come to the edge. He did. He did. He took a leap of faith too. And then find your inner peace. Today is a day of finding your inner peace. There's an egg here, guys. There's an egg here. Well, no, that isn't an egg. That's the moon. That's the... That's... Whoa. That's two moons. <laughs> So this is just being clairvoyant. It's being, you know, knowing. It's an inner knowing. You have a deep knowing that it's time to go. It's time to go towards your new beginning. Take a leap of faith. Come to the edge. Spirit's beckoning you. Come to the edge. Take a leap of faith. And find peace within you. Because there's potential here that hasn't hatched yet. We're still in the seed phase. The egg is incubating. Whatever is about to hatch out of that egg is perfect, but it's going to take time. So hold your faith today, guys. Hold your faith. The overall lesson is the Eight of Swords in Reverse. Release yourself. Stop stressing. Stop worrying. Stop feeling stuck like Chuck. <laughs> Yeah, that's Ramblin' Mike. If you want to go look him up, he's awesome, guys. I love him. I, I wonder if he knows I give him such accolades on my channel. I really do. I have a couple of readers I really just absolutely adore. They're funny. They're inspiring. They're always right on point. And I love the way he reads. He doesn't apologize. See, I, I do the love spreads, and then everybody's like, can't you do a regular reading? <laughs> He doesn't. Every one of his readings, he says, I am reading for love. And he's got thousands of subscribers. Okay? So my block is that I have to love what I'm doing. I have to absolutely love it and cherish it and then boldly embrace it. I need more adjectives in my dictionary, too. So the overall lesson, though, is you've got to get out of this mental anguish. You've got to stop. Just stop. I've been doing it, too. Worry, 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 worry. Stress, 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 stress. 
How do I get out of this? Where do I go? What's going to happen next? How do I fix this? How do I control this? You can't. Let go and let God. I'm, I'm struggling with this lesson myself, guys. I'm preaching to the choir. Trust me. I'm having just as many doubts and fears as you are. All right. So, the advice for the Divine Feminine. The Inner Goddess Oracle. This is Who You Are. The Earth Goddess, number 44, which has been a number I've been seeing a lot. Look, we got four, four, four. Four, four, four. All right, feminines, what do we need to hear today from this uh, 44 earth goddess, earth goddess? What is the teaching? What is the lesson for today? We have love. Love who you are. That's what I'm hearing. Love who you are. In a reading, to live the dream, we have to surrender the fantasy. Wow. Ain't that the truth? How many of you feel like this is all a big fantasy and we're creating it and we're going to make it beautiful? It's got to be just right. Well, remember, it's time. There's times when it's time to live the dream that you fantasize. This can be painful. It feels like the end when in fact it is the very beginning. Once the pain passes, there is the joy of what we have yearned for coming to life in our reality. It may not be as perfect as our fantasies, but it will be real, and it can nourish us. We can build our appetite for life with dreams, but we cannot be fed by them. The soul requires a real life experience to become fully alive, to have experiences and to grow and to expand. There's a fantasy that wants to become reality for you. Don't let a few gritty moments or human imperfections prevent you from experiencing the joy of heaven on earth. Wow, that resonates. That <laughs> really resonates for me. And a friend of mine, I'm going to tell her to go look at it too. There's a fantasy that wants to become reality for you. Don't let a few gritty moments or human imperfections prevent you from experiencing the joy of Heaven on earth, which is what we're creating. Your spiritual guidance from this is you have beautiful dreams and wonderful visions of what life could be. It's not enough to imagine them. You want to live them. This is exactly how you are meant to feel. For that to happen, you must practice feeling grounded, taking practical earthly steps, earthly 3D steps, one at a time. To bring your dreams to life. The universe will send so much help your way. But you are the one who must take the steps. Spirit cannot do that for you. Even if you're not sure how your biggest, boldest dreams can come together. You can still ask yourself. What is it that I can do now, today, in this moment? Sometimes it will be an obvious action that you can take. And sometimes you'll need to pray and meditate and ask for the way forward to be shown. When you can do something, do it. When you cannot, rest and wait for your intuition to nudge you. When the time is right to take the action. Yeah, rest. I'm feeling rest. Remember, you are an earth goddess. You have the power to manifest your visions, to bring your beautiful ideas to life in the world. This is what you're here for. Remember to love yourself enough to recognize your creative power and to use it joyfully each and every day. The sacred ritual that you can do to manifest this in your life is to lie on the earth if you can or rest somewhere that feels right for you. Imagine, feel, visualize, or pretend that the earth energy is rising up through your feet into your belly and then up to your heart. It is giving you a Shakti pat, a boost of divine feminine energy from the great goddess herself to help you feel confident and more in your own power. When you are in your own power, you have no power over others. You have power over self, and that is a beautiful lesson. Embrace it and ask the inner goddess to work with you at this time. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, what's going on with the masculine? Oh, we've got dance. 
Brolga, Brolga, I don't know how to pronounce that, B-R-O-L-G-A, Brolga, Brolga, dance, looks like a crane to me, I'm not sure, let's take a look-see, what advice does the Animal Dreaming Oracle Cards and Spirit have for the Divine Masculine today? Brolga, dance, spontaneous movement inspired by a steady rhythmic sound and a receptive atmosphere is an ancient yet simple way of opening oneself up to the productive cycles of Mother Earth and the nurturing energies of the universe. The Brolga is a solar influenced creature, go figure, because solar, the sun god, Apollo, it's all the masculine energy archetype. <clears throat> The Brolga, as a solar-influenced creature, was traditionally viewed as a symbol of power and righteousness and the bringer of the sacred dance. It could be assumed that Brolgas incorporate movement and dance into their mating rituals in the belief that if they dedicate themselves to spirit and express who they are through dance, their mate will not only see their physical form, but also their heart of hearts and their worthiness as a mate and a life partner. Many of us are told at an early age that we cannot dance and that we have no rhythm. As we grow, we become afraid to express our true selves, and so we only dance in the privacy of our own homes for fear of being ridiculed. This is just one way in which we are. This is just one way in which we, as individuals, become fragmented from who we truly are. If Brolga has danced into your cards today, you are being showed that dance can be your bridge into other worlds. You're being reminded that sacred dance holds the potential to reconnect you to the source and the sacredness, being nurtured within your consciousness. Through dance, you can experience the very unity of the universe. When you feel pressured, no matter where you are, close your eyes and breathe, allowing your body to reconnect to the rhythm of the Earth Mother's heartbeat and the mu music orchestrated by the sounds of nature. Find the stillness and participate in the sacred dance of creation on a level that does not interfere with your daily routine. Simply still your mind and celebrate the inner dance, the freedom of movement that comes with just being. Feel the presence of spirit. Feel the peace that comes with the wisdom and the ancient knowledge found within the internal dance as it permeates your body. This is your dance that connects you to the ancients and the ancestor spirits of the land. Let Brogo show you how to tap into its power and allow it to shift you from the mundane to the extraordinary within your life. Yeah, that's moving one with spirit, you know. I'm not a big dance person, but dancing is a form of creativity. It's a form of initiating movement through your body. Um, which also, you know, stimulates the kundalini and the the um, the heart chakra, the all of the chakras actually. So, if you like to dance, masculine, dance. But what I'm getting from this is, you need to show off for your feminine. You need to show your true colors. You need to show your brilliant magnificence. You ever see those birds that are just so beautiful and they do a dance for their mate? They're like, look at me, look at me. I'm all that in a bag of chips. You better choose me because no one's as good as me. A little bit of healthy bravado, a little bit of healthy of show off is okay. It's okay. Perhaps it's time for you to show your feminine what you've got. All right, this has been your daily love vibe. I love you guys. Don't forget to come see me in Kalamazoo if you can. If you can't, then I guess maybe some other place, some other time. Know that I love you and I'm grateful you are my love tribe. I'm grateful that you are here. If you have never been here before and this resonated with you, please hit the like, share, and comment so that you can be entered into my contest for a free reading. And if you refer my channel to other people, you can also be entered in multiple times. For every person that you refer. Okay? This has been your Sunday's Daily Love Vibe. 
March 3rd, 2019. I will see you guys on Monday.